Welcome back. This is the fourth in a series of uh, demos of uh, ray tracing software for Facet Design. Runs under Windows. This is Jim Ray Test for Windows. I'd like to talk some next about uh, refractive index and dispersion. So uh, let me get a round brilliant here. And this is, this happens to be a simulation of diamond. Let's repeat that with a um, bigger image. You can see that whenever you open the design, Jim Ray brings in the refractive index from the file. And you can see that that came from the file here because it says from file. <laughs> Uh, if you want, you can you could pick a different material than the one you used. This is we're going to look at diamond here. So let's actually we'll look at CZ in a moment. But um, let's get the color set to clear again so we can see what's going on. And let me pick CZ from the list. Cubic zirconia. Now you'll notice here that it's entered a dispersion for me. There's a drop-down list of dispersion here, but if you pick material on the left that is dispersive, then its dispersion value will be entered automatically on the right. So if I pick diamond, I'll get 0.044 for dispersion and 2.42 for refractive index. Let's go back to CZ here, cubic zirconia. Cubic zirconia, you see, has a higher dispersion than diamond. Whenever I run the calculation here, you can see that this is taking longer to calculate than the previous calculation. You might also notice some colors. Jim Ray is using three different refractive indexes, calculating a different image for each one for each of the primary colors of light, red, green, and blue. And then it combines those into a final image. And the little flashes of color here are what you would see when the stone is cut. And those mostly come from the spotlights in the, in the lighting model. And since Jim Ray only simulates three primaries, the spectrum is discrete. It's not continuous like a true rainbow, but still it gives you a good idea of the dispersion performance of the stone. You can also set the dispersion to zero. You can see that the image calculates much faster and there's no color. But the basic optical performance you see is the same. and that dispersion is independent from the stone color so I can still have let's say if I have a some pink CZ here let's do a little paler shade of pink here then the body of the stone is colored but I still get other colors in the stone that are due to the dispersion and this is just as you might expect it So even though the body of the stone is pink, I still get some blue flashes. Now if the stone is, tr is uh, strongly colored, then let me go to a completely red stone here. So that's as red as I can get. So if the stone is strongly colored, however, it, it will filter out the other most of the other colors so even though I'm simulating this with dispersion you can see there's very little blue flashes in here in there all the flashes are practically the same in fact this image is practically indistinguishable from one with no dispersion so 
So if you have a strongly colored material, it really doesn't matter if it's dispersive or not. So in Jim Ray's drop-down list, if I pick a material like um, corundum, that's normally fairly stiffly colored, it will uh, set the dispersion to zero. And uh, basically, materials with low dispersion, it will set the dispersion to zero, because those don't really show much flashes of color anyway. Uh, the, it, it's, usually that goes with a refractive index, but not always. There's one material called uh, Demantoid Garnet that uh, has a relatively low dispersion but a high refractive index. And it's usually this kind of yellowy green color, I guess. So that'll show some flashes of color if the body color of the stone is not too dark. Okay, that's a pretty good rundown on dispersion. Uh, next we're going to look at quartz and uh, start looking at some of the optimization features of Jim Ray.